Hello everybody, I'm Matthew Evans of course, uh, for those new members of course, well, maybe met me before but of course all the regular members will know me from many years of going to the Huddersfield Arts Society. Unfortunately as I say with our current difficulties we're unable to meet of course in person. So never one to shy away from technology, the, uh, I've embraced the Huddersfield Arts Society's new technological revolution. So we've gone from Zoom meetings now into uh, our virtual demonstrations. So thank you so much to Joe Sykes for inviting me to take part in our virtual programme for this year. Uh, I'm ably uh, assisted by my daughter Amy today as well, who's going to be my floor manager and director and looking after editing this towards the end as well. And this afternoon, I'll be showing you a little bit about the type of work that I do and letting you into a few secrets about how I use texture paste, acrylic, and a few other little tricks along the way as well. Uh, you'll see behind me, I do actually have a selection of the texture uh, paintings that I have done in the past. Of course, the uh, most popular Castle Hill, that everybody of course will know as our, our most popular landmark here in Huddersfield. Uh, also as well, there's one in the middle there of uh, a beach scene in Newquay. Uh, and also of course on the far side, uh, a smaller painting of Greenhead Park, the uh, flowers in Greenhead Park. As we go through the video, I'll be giving you a few close-ups as well of those paintings, just to give you an idea of how we go ahead and how we use those um, uh, techniques to create those particular effects. I've also got here um, another picture, a large square picture of a beach scene, uh, which is a painting of Newquay again. And again, there'll be some close-ups of that, showing you how, that, uh, how that's been brought about. Hopefully as well, I'll be able to give you a few more insights into how the equipment that we do use and of course, different things that you might be able to try that maybe you haven't used before. So please enjoy the demonstration and I'll be showing you now a few of the materials that I use. Thank you. Hello there again. So here I have my table of materials laid out. So I've got a little bit of everything on here. Of course, I've got the reference photo that I'm going to be using uh, to work from, which in this occasion is uh, a photograph just above Cow and Calf Rocks and I'm trying to sort of bring together a lot of the things that I usually use acrylic paste and textures for. So we have the florals, the stonework, a little bit of water going through the middle. I'm not going to stick rigidly to the photograph because this is more really to do with showing you a little bit of what we can do with the materials, but it's there just as a reference. So I've got a selection here of the paint and materials that I normally use. So I have System 3 acrylic. Some of them are what we call the heavy body acrylics, where they're more suitable for things like impasto techniques. And I've also got various types of texture paste. You'll find it's called various different things. Um, this particular one says modeling paste, but you'll see it called texture paste, heavy duty paste, that type of thing. You get them in various grades. You can have fun looking through the various uh, craft shops and modeling shops to find that. It's either available in pots or it's available in tubes as well. And as you say, you can get it in various tones and grades as well. And you can get it like a coarse grain or a fine grain if you wanted to use a sand effect. Um, you'd be pleased to know as well, you don't use your best sable brushes for these types of types of work. A good flat filbert brush is always handy as well. And what I tend to use is more nylon brushes. You can even use for texture effects your own um, decorating brushes. So really, um, in many ways, an old worn out brush is probably better than one of your brand new ones because you get so, better, so much better uh, textured effects with them. Also as well, the roller, which a few of you may have heard, I've, I do roller painting these days, uh, which isn't really painting on roller skates, it's painting with roller, so we'll do a little bit of that. And then of course, a famous palette knife as well, which is always handy uh, for painting with anything that's textured or laying on um, heavy grounds. So there's several um, items there as well. I'll be using a lot of the paint directly from the tube, but I do have some water as well, just to wash brushes and just to thin it down a little bit and maybe set up for glazes. So that's really the main type of uh, work and type of uh, materials that I'll be using today. And the canvas that I've chosen is a stretched canvas as well. So it's, you can use canvas board, you can basically use anything you like, a heavy watercolour paper, but the board I've chosen today is a, a stretched canvas, so just stretched on the back. It's been quite a handy one, this one, because it's actually one that I've been able to uh, to reclaim and reprime up as well so uh, 
all set to get going with it. Hello everybody, so now we're all set to start the painting. I've laid out my palette with various texture pastes, various colours. I have a Naples yellow, um, a cadmium yellow, a cerulean blue, a Prussian blue and a magenta. Also an orange and a little bit of pearlescent medium, which some of you may have seen as well um, over the period of time when I've been painting sunsets and various light on water and a few of the acrylic pastes as well. So on screen you'll be able to see the palette and my reference photo that I'm working on that we mentioned before is um, Callum Car Frogs. So I'm starting with a rigger brush, uh, a long fine brush, which is very good for sketching. So I'm just going to do a general drawing just to lay out. Now the canvas that I'm working on, as I said, has already been prepared with um, a ground. Now this originally was uh, a painting from enough that Amy um, lent to me the canvas and the red oxide paste actually made a very good ground to cover that old painting up and to reuse the canvas. So if you ever do need to reuse a canvas and use a, red, uh, use a new base in the way that you would normally lay out maybe an umber as an underpainting, you can use this red oxide paste and set that and you've already got a little bit of texture behind you so it's quite enough for you if I just drag over um, a palette knife just so you can hear that that is already textured, it's already got a sand texture. So that is really the first trick to using texture paste. There's two ways of using it, either you can put it on the evening before and allow it to dry overnight and then use it as a base the day after or you can uh, allow it to mix in with your paint and then of course do wet on wet in that way or you can if you wish paint areas with texture paste and then go over them so I'll show you a few of the, the various techniques today as well but we're already starting with a nice textured background a nice sand background really good as well if you're wanting to maybe put some on paper and use it as a pastel ground as well so all I'm just going to do is just a general move the reference photo just to the side of myself just so you can have a look at what we're doing here and as I say I'm not rigidly going to stick to this particular uh, photograph I'm just going to really show you a few main shapes here of stonework so we're going to keep it quite free and loose and then build up because we want to make sure that we get these areas blocked out first so there's going to be a few few stones and also as well just a little bit just coming down here give you an idea of how we can use uh, stonework and of course there's a few greens on here so uh, people who watched uh, David's how to mix greens um, video as well presentation I don't know if I'm going to be quite as expert at David at mixing greens but I will have a go but apologies uh, if it's not quite how, how everybody mixes greens but everyone does them differently as well it's really good to be a part of this particular type of project working visual, uh, virtually and to be able to do this demo for you. It's something that I was actually going to do earlier in the year, but of course how things went, we haven't been able to do those, those meetings. So I've engaged the help of Amy and her trusty uh, iPhone and a tripod to get set up and do this. So it's something new for all of us, but uh, always a way to learn new things. So I'm just really just laying out the main areas. So I've got the... Um, waterfall area here just coming down there so that's going to be like where the water is and then just a few areas up here just laid out in a different sort of colour which is where I'm going to put the, the heather as well. Amy is supervising me as well today and looking after me and timing things. It's a very weird experience to be able to do it on to be able to do it on camera for you but exciting all the same. Not quite sure if we'll have the Bob Ross happy trees but you never know. Okay so we just laid it out there a little bit just as a general drawing just to get us started. So I've already mentioned about the various ways that you have of putting um, paint on with acrylic. The thing with acrylic of course as we're different to watercolour is watercolour is a lot more fluid than acrylic. You can use acrylic as a watercolour base you know, the acrylic is much more suited for impasto techniques. Now, as I say, with the sound effect here as well, you can hear there that that is actually a sand background. So I'm just here now using texture paste in the way, in a similar way that you would travel maybe 
I don't know, icing onto a cake, I would think, for the uh, baking side of things. Make sure you don't get the pots mixed up because I wouldn't recommend that you ice your cake with this stuff. Uh, it's a similar type of process, laying on a pallet knife, just to get that going. And you're picking up the little background there as well. So this is just the sky. And I'm just going to bleed a little bit of acrylic blue in there. Now what I'm going to try and do with this is, because it's a, a warm background, quite a warm background, I'm going to try and leave a little bit of that showing through. Because you don't have to cover everything, you just use it a little bit. Those of you who know me of course with the paintings will know that I do a lot of pastel work as well. And with the sunset, so this would be an ideal background with sunset, because you've got the warm ground to start with. So you can just hear that, that it is almost like painting on sandpaper. Now. With the texture paste, it is very, very flexible, so you can actually use it on anything as well that is also flexible. It doesn't have to be a board or plywood. You can use it onto paper. Uh, a heavier paper will probably be best, one of the heavier watercolour papers. But if you then did find that you wanted to flex the paper, it would be totally flexible. It wouldn't crack off when you try and blend it, uh, when you try and bend it. So there we go. So that's quite a quick way of filling in the... Uh, the sky. So it's really got a little bit of texture on there as well. Now what Amy's done as well, she's actually been gone round and just photographed the paintings on the on the wall. So as part of the video presentation as well, you will actually see close-ups of those, the ones I was saying earlier about the various ways that I've used texture in the past for florals. Now really here what I'm just doing is introducing a little bit of yellow into my Carillion Blue just to have a little bit of a brighter green. And just drag this down. And this is just actually, I'm mixing the paint here with the white texture paste. And you'll find that it doesn't actually lighten the paint. It does, although it's white in texture, if you left it, it would be tough, it would remain white. It doesn't actually lighten your paint, it doesn't actually have an effect on the colour. And this in itself is playing almost with, uh, with an abstract idea as well. So, just bringing this in down here. sound too Ashley Jackson-esque but uh, here we go. As I was saying earlier you know you can you can find all sorts of stockists for um, for texture paste um, I tend to look a lot online of course our own Stuart Hoyle at Calder Graphics does have a, a range of texture paste as well I'm sure I'll be able to order that in for you or find suppliers but you will find that texture paste is often also used by model makers it can be used on, on three-dimensional models. So if you do have trouble finding a particular grade of the red oxide or anything like that, look on model, model sites. So that's just giving you an idea there of how you can use um, a palette knife just to lay it over the top and give you a little bit like a, a dry brush effect as well. So I'm just going to pop the palette knife on one side. And we're going to go now on to a stipple brush. Now, what you'll also find is as well, I've been doing a lot of these uh, mixed media workshops recently, where it just literally is playing with paint. And you'll find that playing is the optimal word because you can go back and use things from the early learning centre. You'd be amazed what fun you can have with kids' stipple brushes and kids' sponge painting items. So never be scared to go into your local sort of you know, children's shop and look for paint and things like that. Or, you know, just if you're starting out as well and wanting to try some new effects, this stipple brush is really good just for filling areas in. And again, you can hear there in the background the um, the texture of the paint or the texture of the uh, of the ground. And you've still got that warm red there that I'm still allowing to uh, to shine through a little bit. 
So I'm just going to, the, the main part is really, is to replicate um, I'm trying to think in the way I would normally think if I was using pastel. So I'm thinking of this stipple brush as if it was a pastel on its end. Just fill in the area. So the main part for the first for the first couple of minutes of a painting is to get all the background covered. So you know you can especially in this one, I mean of course when we do our usual demonstrations they can be two two and a half hours this of course we're limited with it being the um the video i'm not going to make you sit here for two and a half hours of course we're going to be around about an hour so it just gives you a little bit of an insight in how to start a painting and then of course i think as far as i'm aware there's also going to be a live feed on facebook actually in in november so watch this space as well So I'm just using these yellows and, and greens and blues just to fill in the area, just go to go around the rocks a little bit. And then the Carillion blue and a little bit of the white just to fit in where the, uh, where the waterfall is. So where my supervising here as well. Doing all right, Emmett? Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good. Doesn't shout the cut yet anyway, so that's the best way. Okay, so I'll just fill that area in. Okay, so I'm just going to bring in a little bit of the red oxide paste as well. Just to begin to work around the around the rocks a little bit. So you'll see there, there's just a little bit of texture just where I'm filling in the rock. And the thing about the red oxide paste as well, you might find if, if a particular colour of paste is hard to find, don't worry about it because you can buy whichever colour paste you'd like and then just mix acrylic with it to make it whatever colour you want. This is the pearlescent gel that I'm just bringing in here. I'll just put a little bit of orange in there because it's just a little bit of a shine in the water. Effectively, what it is, is it's like a metallic, almost like a silver. And it's just nice just to bring into a little bit of water and ideas. So I'm just gonna, what you'll find is as well, I'm thinking in the same way as I would normally think if I was working with pastel. So I'm thinking in, in mixing actually on the canvas itself. So rather than mixing too much on the palette, I'm putting pure blue on, pure orange, and then a little bit of the, a little bit of the pearlescent medium, and allowing it to mix on the canvas. So what you'll find is, it's a bit like on MasterChef where you've seen the, um, You've seen the palette all brand new, but now you won't actually see it with it all mixed together. But I'm just sort of picking up a little bit here and there, and then just mixing it all in. Just really. And you get a really nice blend of colours. So I've got the stone work over here. I'm just going to bring a little bit of, again, the blue. Got a very limited palette really, I haven't really put too many uh, too many colours out. I'm sure we're thinking a little bit over here of bringing some of these rocks. So we've got the we've got the main board covered there. I've actually carried the, the texture paste a little bit down the side. So we've got that mainly covered. Bit of a wash out just with uh, water, acrylic of course, all water based. Um, what a lot of people like to do is if they're painting in pasto, of course they think, oh great, oil is the in pasto, but of course using solvent isn't for everybody. Whereas with acrylic, you can get that pasto effect and it's all water. It's all clean up with water and mixed with water. So again, just on here, this is just going in again with the, uh, the white acrylic. 
And under these lights here, I've got one of these daylight bulb lights here. And although, you know, that texture paste is just drying quite quickly, so it's giving me a little bit of a resist, which is nice. And this is actually, um, again, a decorator's brush. And again, just a very cheap decorator's brush. As I was saying before, you know, you can use, you know, in many ways, a brush that's gone off is probably even better than, than a brand new brush, you know, because you're not as precious with it. You know, as I was saying before, certainly you wouldn't use your, uh, you certainly wouldn't use your, your sable brushes to do this anyway. And if you did, you wouldn't have a point on them for very long. So what I'm doing now is almost like, again, a technique that you can use with acrylic and a brush like this of stippling. And stippling basically is just very therapeutic really, it's just like really going in circular motion and just dabbing it onto the canvas. <clears throat> And you can just sort of blend that down. I'm still leaving a little bit of the uh, a little bit of the red showing through. I just like that contrast a little bit there as well. So I've got that going. And I see what I was saying as well a little bit about if you get the, like children's sponge markers or, or um, sponge brushes that you can get in kids' painting sets. And this is again a different way of getting. Um, a mark. This again is just blending in the feel of this. Of course, if we were in the um, in the actual room with everybody, I'd be passing this round so you could get a feel of it. But it actually just feels literally. It feels like acrylic paint. It's exactly the same consistency as acrylic paint. You don't put water in the, the paste, of course, but it's exactly the same texture. But you can just. Roll it over up there. I keep turning now just to make sure we've got it in uh, we've got it in shot. Right, but I think we are. Amy's happy. Yeah. <laughs> the director is happy. So we're all okay. So I'm just and as you say, it's, you can hear that it's still got the, the grit there of the uh, of the ground. I hasten to add, this isn't a painting that Amy had done that I painted over. It was a canvas that she said she didn't want to have pink stripes on it. And I couldn't help, I couldn't actually cover it up with the uh, with white. It wasn't um, even acrylic. I think I put Sharpie on the canvas. All right, Sharpie. Okay, well, there you go. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend. There you go. That's another tip. That's a tip for free from Amy. Don't use Sharpie on canvases. You want to paint over it. Mm, it died it. <laughs> That's what happened. It died it. Yeah. Two tips for the price of one. So what I'm just going to do now is I've gone in and got a, a fine brush again. So I'm just now going to pick out some of these shapes. A few of the rock shapes here. And then just Thinking about a little bit of the purple here, so a bit of the magenta and some Prussian blue just to make up the purple. And I'm just going to play a little bit here. As, as I was saying before, it's not about copying the photograph rigidly, it's just showing what effect you can get. Because what I'm probably going to do is put the photograph to one side and just, just have a play, really. And that, that's what it's all about, is this really just playing with new techniques. I mean, of course. Uh, an, hour, an hour for a demonstration usually you know it'd be uh, very very quick so it's just really to give you an idea of something new that you can try I've actually got a very rainy day today in the big house as well so you wouldn't actually be out painting today so all I'm doing here and this is effectively when we're saying on the uh, I had, a look, I had a look at the um, the summary that I sent to Joe about what the um, what the demo was going to be, and it said stonework and flowers and a, and a beach scene as well. But uh, I had a slight change of heart because you know doing the three paint three or four paintings in the hour would be a bit rigid. So I tried to do something that would bring everything all together in one. So we've got a little bit of a beach side of things here. I don't know, it's a little bit of a 
a tenuous link, but you know, it's very sort of similar effect um, of, of beach work as well. But you've got the one just behind me up here of, of Newquay, which shows you how it can be used as well on, for a beach. A little bit of pearlescent gel again, just to pick out these uh, areas. Again, when this is actually dry, of course, blend it into the video so you can actually see the finished the finish work as well. You know, work a little bit more over onto it as well. And we will be editing over the uh, over the next few days. This pearlescent gel is actually. This one's actually called Pearl Medium. You, I have actually seen it in Colder Graphics. Colder Graphics do sell it. And they certainly sell the texture paste in large in large buckets as well. So I'll definitely go down and see Stuart and ask him for various various. I know he definitely had a catalogue with with a large bucket of the uh, of the texture paste in. We're just trying to get a little bit of movement in the water as it just comes down there. People who Follow me on Facebook. We'll probably see over the last couple of days. I've been I've been doing a waterfall image as well from a little bit further further up from this, which is which was actually in Ingleton, so a little bit further up into the uh, into the dales. Just a little bit of a, a bit of a coincidence. Uh, greens again. Apologies to David if I'm mixing these incorrectly. <laughs> still hear as well that um, that resistance as well of the sand background and it is other than having the camera on it is actually very very uh, very very therapeutic just nice sort of pushing on and of course doing things like this who's to say that that flower was in a different position or you know just enjoy it if it's not exactly how the photograph is I'll look around now just as I'm on this bottom edge here and just see if we're still in shot and then it's just going to double check for me now. just rung there actually and then it's just gone out it's like a bit like that when you're on the television when someone rings you and says oh you're on the telly but I don't think anyone will be seeing this just yet <laughs> so uh, another one not to use orange of course in my sunset so just blending a little bit of orange in here just for the header it was really beautiful the other couple of weeks when I went up there onto the uh, onto the Callum Car for Ox Hill Climar and remarkably busy actually as well because uh, I was, when I was driving up there as well, which I thought was a really good idea for a painting, there was of course Hill Climo with nothing in there for miles. And it said a sign in the middle, please, uh, please socially distance. There was nothing there for miles. <laughs> yeah, of course. Always good to do when everyone was socially distanced on the, on the moor as well. So a really good way to have a walk and socially distance as well. So really now I'm really using a pointerless technique just to fill in this header in the background. Just bring that a little bit closer so you can just see the top header there as well that I'm working on at the moment. So this is the floral aspect of things. And just again thinking about like a using a small brush here as well, just picking up how you would normally just dab on with pastel really, just using pure colour and mixing it actually on the canvas. Just going in between the rocks as well, just with a little bit of green. So using Naples yellow, a little bit of cadmium yellow and cerulean blue. A little bit of red just to darken it off a little bit. So a little bit 
too far there, so I'm just going to bring a little bit of push and blue in. Okay. too quiet but I'm just blending away there now just having a fun little time here and it's still supervising so I've just put some of the major rocks in there a few of them have moved around a little bit as I say it's not really an exercise in getting every rock in the right place it's just really giving you a few ideas But you'll see here as well now, you still use the same technique, even though you're using impasto, um, where we always say, you know, start off with a light coating and then work to the heavier impasto. It's again the same here. So you'd start with, with a thin layer and then put your heavier layers over the top. Thinking in the same way as I would normally think if I was using uh, pastel. I'm just brushing, just as just as almost a stipple effect. You'd see here now as well, of course, you know why you don't use again a nice brush with a nice point on it because the it's better actually if you've got one where you can you can scrub it a little bit. So you're drawing as you go, just with the brush. A magenta and a cerulean blue just mixed together. I'm just lining that up. We've got just leaving that base coat of the uh, of the cream effect of the Naples yellow just underneath. Blending in just a little bit of white just into there just to wait for the highlight. Just a few rocks around here. Not quite sure what type of rock it is up there. Actually, I should really have a little bit of a look to see what it was, but. Almost like a silvery blue colour, so you can again use some of that pearlescent gel. A little bit of artistic license here, and how the rocks lay flat. And here you've got this little stepping point here as well. So almost here you're still in drawing territory really, you're just sort of using your brush and your colours. With a little bit of texture paste in there just to draw out the areas. As I said, it's just there working in here with the waterfall down here as well. Okay. Time yet? Mm -hmm. Good. And we've got a time in for me. You may go slightly over the hour, but just 
really mixing colours together. The good thing as well about acrylic is when it's on there, which I sometimes say as well, if you've got colour to use up at the end of a day, you know, even if it's not the right tone or, or shade or whatever, you can still put it on and use it as an underpainting because the texture is still ideal for something. You know, you've still got the texture there as well. So if you do have a big wadge of paint that you don't think you're going to use, just at least put it on because it'll be, it'll be useful for something. rocks down here now and as we said you, you begin to see a little bit more of the uh, of the brush strokes in there okay. okay so now we've got an idea of where everything is so around about sort of 20 30 minutes into the actual painting so if you are if you're out for the day you you just sort of started your painting day really okay So we're back in now with the palette knife. So we've got everything going. So I've got some quite heavy um, paint onto my palette knife here now. So I'm just going to now bring this down just to give it a little bit of perspective just in the foreground. So this is where you really start using your, your, your paint, your texture paste now. So this is really a little bit of everything mixed together. I just want to get this little plateau here, it's just one of those little areas where you go on so it just to sort of jump over the river or something like that. So you can pick up areas of that underpainting that you've put on. Again, you can still hear that texture underneath. What I'm going to do now is really now go for putting the texture on now with a knife. So we're using this one here, which is the high density uh, modeling paste. High density really just means it's the heavier, the heavier thickness of the name, as the name suggests. So I'll just get a good wadge of that out, just literally like taking spread out of a jar. So I'm just lifting it straight out of the jar. You can see that just on the uh, on the camera. Now the good thing about using texture pastes as well is you can really just now build it up and it will maintain its, its peak. So whatever you put on here it will stay, it won't dry back. So down here just towards the bottom there's some quite hefty rocks there. So I'm just really going to, if I can just see it down here. And just maybe tip the camera down slightly. So we're just down at the bottom here, you can just see where I'm just dabbing that in, and it's just giving it like the texture there. And this is the texture paste, and as I say, it feels just like a really gritty acrylic paint. And with a palette knife, you can really just dab it on and leave it. And it's effectively like mixing the paint actually on the canvas and what you can just see I'll just lift up my uh, my palette here as well so you can just see there where I'm just lifting it off there with the, with the side of the palette knife and then just straight onto the board it's almost like well literally troweling really So this is just how I'm building up the foreground. 
Now what you tend to find that you do as well, the good, other good thing about using a palette knife is that whilst you're actually painting, you're clearing up as well because you're actually scraping all the paint off your, off your palette. And then that makes it even more like pure colour all mixed together. I'm just here thinking as well when I'm putting the paint on. I'm just going to... A little bit more Naples yellow. So I'm just getting into my head, almost feeling the landscape as well. So you would go over there, so you follow the contour over. So it's just in your mind's eye, following the contour where you are. So if it's flat on the, on the reality, it's flat on the picture. And if you're sort of walking up towards it, just have it where it is literally the, 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 the palette knife mark is sweeping upwards. And this is where the fun begins really, because you can really now just get some paint on there as well. I think sometimes with a with a brush you can be a little bit tight fisted with the paint but with a palette knife you can really you can really slack it on so again for a green here it literally is just a little bit of the blue a bit of the yellow just matched on and just dabbed around so this is really how i'm using texture a lot of this now is just the actual paint straight from the tube as you've probably noticed i haven't really gone for any water i've just really used the water just to clean you know just to clean the brush just to wash the brush out and as we said no solvents of course it's all all water based This in effect it's just really dabbing colour onto colour. And again just scraping it off the palette. And I always say with acrylic as well, nothing is wasted. Because what I tend to do is as well, if I've got a lot of um I've got a lot of paint left and I've got a lot of little pieces of watercolour paper or board, I always have them close to hand. Because that way you can start lots and lots of small underpaintings. So what I'm doing here, literally, this is a little bit of a trick on here. Of just going upwards to try and get it like, uh, like some grass effect. Now this I was actually told by a book publisher is called Scraffito. Because I sent in this picture where I'd used um, oil pastel and scratch, scratched into it. And they said, oh, we do like your Scraffito work. And I wasn't 100% sure what they meant, but apparently it does mean scr scratching into it, scraffito. I don't know if it could be Italian for scratching or something like that, but that's apparently what it is, where you use a, a tool just to scrape into it. So this texture paste, when it does actually go on, it's almost like a posh, a posh polyfiller really, if, if there's such a, such a thing. But see, of course, if you used proper polyfiller, it wouldn't have the flexibility. So, I mean, you know, it would, it would scrape off after a while, it would crack. Okay, so I'm just going to... Oh, here now, you can just see a little bit how a lot of the texture now is caused by putting paint on and then scratching it back off again. I'm looking really now just to really come down here and put a bit of this water in. We're just coming close to close to time. But you will find that you can really, really have fun with with acrylic and texture paste. And really, you know, you could really sit here all day and work on this. And of course the day after, it'll be all totally dry again, and you can work over it again because as we said, what's underneath won't actually come off. I'm just going to do is I'm just going to get a really good wash of this pearlescent medium. So if you can see this just on the camera, 
It's a really good pile of that just there, which is, again, as I say, it just looks like a, a, a shiny white, really. That's what it is. So I'm going to use this just in here for the water. And this, again, is just straight out the tube. Now this, all oh, straight out the bottle in this case. So really, literally, what you can do is you can feel the water in it. And whatever you put in there, it will dry with that. It won't dry flat, it will dry with the actual movement of the water in there. So you can really take this back up where the, where the waterfall moves up there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of a sketch in here as well, just a bit of a, a line work over the top just so you can sort of see where, see where I'm going with it. Now, of course, when this is dry, what we will do by the wonders of, of Amy's wonderful editing is we'll be able to put some little areas of texture, of close-ups of the texture. So you'll be able to see how this dries a little bit closer up, of course. But it really just gives to give a nice effect. Just as the water just flowing down there. It's really good as well just to put like almost like the, the crest of the water just over the top there. And again, because you're not mixing colour actually on the palette, it's not actually going to go muddy. So, exactly like so what I'm just going to do now is one of the big colours I've got left is the orange. So I've got some really good orange um, heather just down here. So that's there for that, just to patch that in. Again, there's a little bit of pearlescent medium, nothing's wasted. Just dab that in. Now if I'm particularly quiet, you can just hear how that's resisting. And that again is another good trick of just blending upwards. And if you look there now, I'm just really putting Prussian Blue in with Wet Naples Yellow, a little bit of the Pearlescent Medium, and also a little bit of Texture Paste. It's basically whatever I've got left on the uh, on the palette now that I'm just, just dragging in. And this is a way where you can actually literally paint wet in wet. This painting, it isn't the sort of thing you'd be able to put straight into your bag and go home after one of the Huddersfield Art Society uh, meetings. It would have to stay pretty much where it is, and this is going to stay here for the evening, of course, drying. So we've got all sorts of various different techniques there, all going, all going together on the one painting. to put a little bit of the magenta and the colour cool just down here. So I'm just going to put a little bit of Prussian blue, a little bit of magenta just as the heather. Again, even in the distance slightly you can use Use the palette knife, and it literally is now building up I'm going to do actually sign off in a few moments I'm going to be um, asking him if you can zoom into a few of these textures for you just so you can just so you can see them at the moment of course it's a little bit over my shoulder really but And it just gives you an idea how you could use this for, for florals. And it's actually got a lot of abstract qualities. It doesn't have to be, of course, a realistic painting. And 
I've been saying for ages and ages about an artist that I knew of who threw the paintings away that framed the palettes. And I've actually, over the last few days, actually photographed or scanned in my palettes, taken bits down, and they are subconscious acrylic, uh, abstract paintings. Hello there, folks. So we're just back again now, just, just really completing this little bit, just bringing it a little bit under control. Um, as I said, the... Um, Painting now is pretty much all underway. You're probably at a stage now where you will be thinking, right, we'll leave it to dry and work on it a little bit in the morning. You know, usually, generally speaking, if you're putting lots and lots of texture paste on just at the end of the evening, it would take around about, you know, that evening for it to dry or overnight to dry. It's usually dry in the morning. Uh, of course, with oil paint, it takes a lot longer to dry, so it will be more of a, a time-consuming exercise. This has just really been an idea of just, just giving you that idea of how you can work something different into your into your paintings. I'm going to be asking Emma just in a few moments just to zoom in on this just so you can get a little bit of a closer closer look at various areas as well. So this again now is just again just a stipple effect of the the white acrylic just on the top. As I say, you'll find that it does keep its uh, keep its peak. But while you are working into it, it will keep the, the level of peak. This will stay on the easel actually now for the evening, for the night. That'll be dry in the morning. So just now, working a little bit of detail just up here as well. I'm going to keep the sky, I think, pretty much exactly as it is for the moment because I like that movement. There's just that little bit of the uh, of the background showing through as well. And it's a quick way of painting as well, you know, and as I say, you know, even though we have a, a light here, the acrylic hasn't dried quickly. It's, it's stayed pliable and it's still very pliable now as well. One of the tricks I actually learned while I was uh, just doing a little bit of workshop or teaching work recently as well is if you do have a lot of paint left over at the end of the day, wrap it in cling film. It's a tip I gave to Amy as well. So it does actually, you, you can use, if you wish, um, the stay wet palettes and things like that, or your own variations of them. But if you just have a palette and you want to keep paint for the day after, just wrap it in cling film and it does, it does work. Oh, you learn something new every day. So I'm just here just filling in in little areas with the oxide paste. Okay, so I'm just really bringing all this little area here together around here as well. So if just, what you'll find is when you've got lots and lots of paint on there, you are actually then just working into what's already there and just adding little bits just to consolidate what's there. And again, we're still building up these, th these thicker layers. Okay, everybody, so what we're just doing now, so I've just asked Amy just to zoom in quite closely to the painting. What I've done now is, as you can see, as you're looking over it now, you can see all the various textures that we've built up. I'm just going to be using a little bit of a stipple brush here just to blend it in a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that to dry now. And, of course, by the magic of, uh, of video and television, and we'll be coming back uh, in around about 12 hours, so tomorrow, um, when I can just show you a little bit more of detail on that. But that's the underpainting, getting everything going and getting everything moving now as well. So now the day after the picture is now all completely dried and finished, the uh, acrylic paste uh, has dried now into a solid base. And what I've done then is just used a, a fine brush just to work in detail around the heather, also adding the green in between the rocks and just adding a little bit more detail just to bring it all together. We've also got the water down here and you will see, if I just bring it closer up there for you, the various techniques, just how the rocks have been done and the paving stones there as well. And as you can see from that, it has got quite a nice permanent um, texture to it now here just about fingers rubbing over it there it's got a nice textured feel as well and solid as well and the good thing about acrylic 
is of course if you do decide in a few weeks time that you want to change it a little bit you can go back into it and work over the top as well uh, as far as varnishing goes of course in town each itself if you do decide to varnish you can protect it a little bit but of course if you did decide to varnish either the matte or a gloss varnish uh, you will be able to do that straight away as well if you wanted to you don't have to wait in the way that you do with oils so that's the demonstration completed so thank you so much for um watching this demonstration and i hope it's been of some interest for you and please keep on painting please stay safe and we hope that we're all back together again very very soon at our huddersfield art society thank you very much indeed